I thought I'd uh, take you along with me on a learning journey. Um, what I've done is I've been trying to figure out how to use graphite and uh, glass enamels together with uh, painting and uh, silversmithing. So what we'll do today with this one is we'll create this uh, very, very cute uh, picture of a bunny rabbit on a copper disc that has been enameled and uh, then I was able to set it in a sterling setting and uh, I'll show you the process that uh, I've been using. I uh, learned a few things along the way. This is really quite a pretty piece but um, and all the basics will, will apply. But uh, there were a couple of bugs yet to work out and I hope you enjoy the process and play with it. It's, it's actually really a fun thing to do uh, with a lot of creative freedom involved in it. My first step is uh, usually to prepare the blanks for enameling. Uh, and there, you, know, you can cut them out, you can buy them pre-made. There are hundreds of different ways to do this. Um, I, I do, if I can, I, I like these dies here, the uh, fast stamping system from Potter, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, I, I don't use them to stamp fast, but I, I like their versatility and I like the way they cut with very minimal burr uh, that you have to finish. <clears throat> and for things like this, I, I'm not going to dome this piece of copper. Uh, although, you know, if it was thinner, I probably would dome it. And to dome things, this is really ideal. Because what you can do is put this piece of metal in and, and use a piece of urethane. And before you cut it, you dome it. And then you cut it, and it's a really, really efficient way uh, to to dome odd shapes. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to do that here. Uh, and again, normally what I would be doing is I would be punching probably a dozen pieces at a time. But this is for illustration. I'm, I'm sort of just doing uh, an example of the preparation. So all you do then is put the cutter on top of your metal. And again, these are designs that you could feed metal in in a constant strip, but I don't do that. Okay, then we'll put that in here and add a spacer so that we don't drive those pegs up into our platen. And then we'll just cut that piece. Okay, then we'll see what we got. Yep, here's the, the negative. Quite nice. A little scrap piece of copper and my copper blank fell out the other side. It's really pretty. Now, for these, rather than punch a hole in them to put a bale on, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to make a nice enough one that I can put it in a sterling silver setting. So, in anticipation of doing a setting, I'll also punch the same shape out of a piece of sterling. This is again 20 gauge sterling. That was 20 gauge copper as well. And this will form the, the base for a, uh, a, a small prong setting, I think, for that when, the, when that piece is done. And that, that, that will match it perfectly. Okay, so put that in there and cut it. You notice the snick you hear when it when it cuts. Uh, that's because I, it's fresh out of the rolling mill, and the metal is quite hard, and and that actually is what is best for for using a punch or a die like this. Okay, so what we have now is a, a nice piece of sterling and a matching copper disc, and this I'll wait until the very end and I'll use it to prepare a setting, and this I'll try to make a piece of hand drawn art on enamel. So the first step then is going to be to prepare this for the backing of counter enamel. Okay, so 
so what I'll do next is prep this as though I were going to use transparent enamel, uh, even though I'm just using opaque as a counter. And again, there's lots of different ways to do this, but uh, an easy way is to simply use a, a little like a green scratchy and some clean water. This is distilled water because I don't have running water out here in my studio. And we just make sure that we've gotten rid of almost all, if not all, of the oxides. Now, again, with, with the tr opaque enamels, you know, uh, yeah, they, they will absorb most of the oxides. But the transparents, you, I've discovered I really have to do a really nice job cleaning these. So I just have gotten in the habit of just doing that all the time. So what I'll do is then dry that at least a little bit. And you'll notice that I'm touching it. So the thing that will cause trouble for you is if you have grease from your fingers or something like that. So when I'm especially when I'm doing a whole bunch of these, the next step before I enamel is to use just a little isopropyl alcohol um, on a paper towel and that'll clean it up nicely. I found that on, on fine silver I often will use acetone. I think that's a little more aggressive, um, but either one works quite quite fine. And the isopropyl is, is less toxic and cheaper and easier to get. Okay, so that's ready for the counter enamel. Well, the counter enamel I've adopted is uh, a classical counter enamel from Thompson's. It, I, I really love the look of it because it, it uh, resembles the the back of a like an old-timey turkey roaster when you get it done um, and that's that's a very I, I just like it I like that 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 color and that look so you could do this dry because it's a flat disc or flat oval but I'm going to use a little spritz of clear fire which is an organic binder I think it's like a sugar in water and doesn't take much but I like that just to make sure that I get good adhesion. Okay, and now I'm going to use a, a 40 mesh sifter to put on a fairly heavy coat of counter enamel because when I prepare these blanks, I know ahead of time I'm going to be putting several coats of enamel on the other side. And, and you want to balance, you want to balance the, uh, the forces. So, you want to have about the same thickness on each. Okay, so that's ready, almost. We'll put it on a trivet. There we go, I'll save my counter enamel. And the next step is going to be to torch fire that. So here's the uh, little enamel oval ready for torch firing. I'll start my torch. And because it has a liquid clear fire on it, even though it's probably dry, I let it set for a few minutes. I, I like to start, I just get in the habits of uh, starting low so that the piece warms without shocking it. And that also will help when I go to do the next steps because uh, then I'll be firing it when it already has a coat of enamel on it. You don't want to shock it. Okay, and then we'll just fuse that counter enamel to this piece of copper. Back off a little slowly. Let the glass adhere well, and then we're good to go. And I like to, you know, so what you do after torching, you let it set for a moment. Uh, it doesn't take long, but you want that you want that glass to be solid before you grab it, because otherwise, I, I learned, to, you know, if I grab it too fast, I'll put a put a mark in it, and and that's not good. Okay, so I'll. I tend to dip my trivets in water after they fire. 
So that's the back side. Looks quite nice. So I'll cool it off. Then I'll put it in the pickle pot for just a few minutes. And then we will abrade the, the, the other side and apply a white enamel for the background of our drawing. Okay, I, I prepared this blank uh, the same as I did the uh, for the other side. And this time I'm going to put um, a coating of opaque white as a ground. And it, it may take two coats. Um, so I'll spritz it with just a little bit of the clear fire. And sometimes I use an 80 for this, but uh, I, I think I'll use the 40. This doesn't really go on as heavily and as the, as the counter enamel. And I, I still, I, my, my experience, my limited experience so far has been that with this particular enamel, I still may need two coats. Um, but what I would do then is, is use a very fine sifter for the second coat. Okay, so once again, that's set. And I just put some gunk from my fingers into my enamel. So I'm going to put that enamel into my little jar of... Uh, potentially counter enamel. I, I save everything just in case there's a use for it. If it just is for counter enamel, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So once again, this piece is simply going to go get torch fired. Alrighty, all ready to try and see if we can fuse this white. Starting low. back off a little bit. This actually looks pretty good, but I am going to put a, uh, a very fine second coat of enamel on that, just to uh, even out some of the spots, since I'll be using it as a canvas to draw on. Okay, waiting a few moments. Pick it up, take care of my trivet, and allow that to cool before I put a a second small coat of enamel, or very thin coat of enamel on it. Well, your next <clears throat> your next steps are simply to prepare the uh, blank surface to receive graphite. If you're painting or applying to cals, you don't need to do any of this kind of stuff. But um, one thing you you can do is, is first of all, you want to make sure that you have a re relatively flat uh, surface. And I'm, I have the advantage that I do stone cutting as well. So sometimes I'll just take a piece like this downstairs to my lapidary wheel and uh, use the diamond wheels and water down there. Or, or you can buy uh, diamond, flexible diamond paper. I like this because it, uh, it will conform to the curves too. And I, I'm not going to flatten this very much. <clears throat> Because it's pretty, pretty flat as it is. I had put a second coat, by the way, of enamel on top of that, just exactly the same way as I did before, so I didn't videotape that. And I'm just sort of scratching this up. Now, if you had a very flat surface to begin with, <clears throat> then this kind of abrasive would be the only additional thing you would need to do to prepare it for graphite. 
because the graphite is merely going to be physically, mechanically scraped off when you run it over the surface of this enamel. Um, and it, it, it will just deposit little graphite crystals into the uh, roughened glass. Now that said, it almost never, for me, is good enough uh, or, or, or even enough for that. So, you can also tell I, I knocked down the high spots, but there's still a little bit in there. So what I'll do for the next step is fairly typical and it's going to be to use an etchant. This, I just grabbed this armor etchant from a hobby store. Uh, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to show you on camera this because this is like, you know, using something from, you know, using, using drain cleaner or something. You have to be careful with it. Um, just follow the directions. Uh, keep it off your bare skin. Uh, use copious amounts of water to rinse it. So what I'm going to do, though, is simply paint a heavy layer onto this white surface and let it sit for a minimum of uh, 10 to 15 minutes and as long as an hour or so it won't be a big deal it's it's very very dilute uh, acid uh, that that's that's a very serious acid so you have to be careful with it um, but that'll put a, a real nice tooth onto this glass surface that I can use to draw on well, it's quite a natural question uh, to ask what kind of pencil is best to use. And, I, I, look, I'm like the last guy in the world that should be giving advice on this because I've just started playing with these. However, that said, uh, having done a little bit of uh, looking into this and, and then trying a lot of different things myself, pretty much any chunk of graphite that you can make a mark with will work. Uh, the thing to remember is that all the graphite will will be uh, much paler, more pale, after you fire it into a ground. And um, that, so that said, the, the HB series of LEDs will work fine, um, but you need to be realizing that they, they will yield a, a fine line, but it will be a very light gray line. Um, I, I think generally a, a 2B type of lead is a is a great all-round all-purpose lead to use. Um, then of course you know you you can get them in just standard pencil type and and I use these a lot. Um, I also like mechanical pencils uh, because I can swap leads out. So this one has currently a 4B uh, half millimeter lead in it and and it works quite well uh, as well. Uh, then my favorite for for doing any kind of drawing is a uh, pretty much a drafting pencil. These have two millimeter leads that you can buy and, and then sharpen. They, they, they sharpen to a really nice point and this one has a 2B lead in it and that's what I use the most. And then for really black lines you can get 5B and this, this one happens to be a, a 9XXB which is, which is very very black um, but it's also very soft and powdery and so it, it, it's not a great choice for doing all of the work, but it's good for some highlights. Okay, so I hope that helps. It's uh, really up to you. It, it's, it's pretty much you can do it as low tech as you want with a standard Ticonderoga or, or Pentel pencil that, that will, work, will work just fine. Well, let's, uh, let me see if I can uh, draw something worth having on this. So we'll try for one of my well, a cute little bunny and uh, maybe some flowers or something like that with some grass, you know. That makes sense for a bunny rabbit. Let's, uh, let's start, let's start here. And again, I'll do this. Let's get him to be about yay so. And uh, let's see, this will be the, the start of a ear. And it comes up and does a little back curve. And we got this. And there we go. <clears throat> That's one ear. Okay, let's bring this. Front part 
four of them. Again, many bunnies don't have this long of legs, but I'm going to just give this bunny a long leg. A little more like a cat, but oh well. And this is coming up right about there. So bunnies, I think, tend to have a uh, kind of a, a bean-shaped or a spherical-shaped head. Okay, let's put this ear on. going to draw very much on the bottom because that's going to be grass and stuff. Okay, so let's see. So this is the front here. Does this. Okay, so let's see. Where do I want his nose? I have to blow the dust off. And then we have an eye. And again, especially stylized bunnies. You have quite large eyes. Pick it up. Blow on it. Yeah. Let's see. Do I like that? Uh, I kind of don't like that. So let me see if I can fix it. I may have to redo a bunch. Again, we'll <laughs> blow it. It's uh, it did put a little bit of a haze on it, but oh well. Alrighty, let me see. What can I do that I like better? I think I need to have more of a, there, I think it needs to be like that. There, I like that much better. And then we'll give the hint of an eye over there. And then let's add some, okay, wait a minute, I think this ear needs to have that. And then we need to add some shading just to give some volume to these things okay and let's see a little shading under here different ways of going about shading. I mean, you can use a lot of different things. Um, excuse me. One thing I like to do uh, for, for fine work is the tip of a bamboo skewer. Now, it'll, it'll scrape a little bit, but it does, it does a reasonable job. A more classical smearing thing is this rolled up bit of paper. does a really nice job of giving a lot of volume and then I like it because I can carry over some of the graphite okay alrighty that's not too bad let me blow that off okay so Let's see, before we go any further now, I want to touch up some of the lines. Let's add there, a hard line there, a hard line there. We're going to put hard lines in. 
where they became just a little smeared. Yes, okay, now I will want to put some uh, We'll want to put some whiskers on them, but I'm going to wait just a titch. Because for right now, I want to see if I can lay out some background flowers and grass that uh, I might wind up putting color on. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit. It's pretty sharp, but to sharpen it, you know, again, we'll just use a piece of sandpaper. Because I don't want to have to sharpen the entire piece like I did already. I just need to have a slightly better point. Okay. And then we'll bring our bunny back. I think I'm gonna try for some, like a little cluster of some flowers. Let's see, right about there. P1, and let's do like some lazy daisies. Into some petals are going back there. Okay, so then we put on stems. Let's put on a nice stem that's cutting cutting this way, and it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. This stem is going to come here and just behind the bunny, and then this one. Here and near the bunny's feet. Okay, that's three little flowers. Let's put some some leaves on this. Um, let's see. These are sort of make-believe flowers anyway. So let's put some. Let's put a petiole and a, a fine leaf there. Do the same here. this, I'm almost guaranteeing that if I put color on it, I'm going to want to have some green. Which is good. Alrighty, 
so that's those three flowers so it's going to be if I do that right that'll be a little oh yeah that's what it needed um that'll be a little splash of color probably yellow with green there I think I'd like some little blue flowers maybe one there and then a couple over here and one in the foreground so let's uh, let's see what we can do I better sharpen this pencil again There's an odd number over here making an even number, but that's different elements, so I'm not worried about that. Let's put a stem on there. And we'll bring the stem all the way down. We'll put a stem on this one coming in front of the bunny. This stem's going to go behind the bunny. And that one's coming over here. Now these flowers, I think we'll put fanciful, lacy, like leaves. Oh, these are just like little fancy fantasy leaves. That's what we'll call them there. Kind of frilly. So that will be a little bit of color, I think. So let's see if that was yellow and blue and green. That looks pretty good. So then we have some, now we have to have some grass. And I might add a little green enamel here at the bottom anyway. So we just want to make sure we have brought that together have an explanation for why you can't see the bunny rabbit all the way. <laughs> but I kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, that I think is not too shabby. If it, if it fires well, I think that might be close to a keeper. Uh, so, what I'm going to do next is uh, take it off of the double stick tape here and probably fire it. Now, um, since I'm going to be putting color on that, I think, I'm not going to put transparent on this at the moment. I'll, I'll wait and put some transparent on it after I paint the flowers a little bit and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so what I'll have to do is be a little careful of the, of the graphite, but that should be fun. Well, it's time to see if we can uh, put the flame to little Mr. Bunny Rabbit here. And hopefully, it'll be okay.
So that gets there. I think I did it. Okay. Well, we will find out in a few minutes. Um, and then I will try to put a little coloration on this. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it looks. See if it's worth setting. Well, now it's time to try and add a little color to this. Um, you know, there's many ways to do this. I'm getting used to the various kinds of watercolors um, and I'm experimenting with some others. These, these happen to be colors that I made from ceramic stain and uh, what's called painting flux, which is exceptionally finely ground glass. And uh, I'll, uh, I think I've chosen blue, green, and yellow for this palette. So what I'm going to do is, is put a little bit of this of each one in, in, a, in a well on my little micro palette here. And I don't need much because, you know, again, I'm just going to be doing these, just a couple like little leaves and some flower petals and that kind of thing. So it's not like I'm doing a whole painting. Um, I'm, what I'm doing is I, I'm trying to get used to using glass I'm instead of oil color I, 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 I'm when I paint I paint in oils uh, I like oil colors and uh, as much as the watercolors are really pleasant to use they're a different they're a different look and I'd like to practice enough to, that I can get good enough to do some miniature ceramic glass painting and so to do that I'm playing with different kinds of, of paints and oil media. So there's my, my raw powders. And again, I mix those in a, you know, a certain proportion. Now I'm going to try, I've got some oil here. This is an oil medium. I, I mixed um, 9 to 1 squeegee oil and lavender oil. The squeegee oil is a pine, I think it, it's probably a pine tar type thing. It smells, they both smell really good. And it has a little viscosity to it. So um, that, will, that will help bind the, the paints. And uh, it's a matter of just mixing it in enough to suspend the finely ground glass and not so much to make it Kind of crappy, let's see. And I haven't, I haven't got that experimented satisfactorily yet, but we'll work on it. I think the yellow is going to need a little more. I've got a little more yellow in there. Okay, so I'll uh, mix these up before I bring a brush down. I'll at least get these more or less. in oil and see if I need dramatically more or less or what. Yeah, I think the yellow is going to be okay. Right. Okay. So these are just going to be, the particles are just becoming suspended in the oil. I'm going to put the cap back on the oil, take a chance that I have enough in these wells, because I think I probably do. Yeah. This is a, a, a deep royal blue. <laughs> yeah, I've ordered some additional paints. Again, just to, to fill out my repertoire, if you will. Okay, that's blue. And then we'll do the green here. So kind of a very light green. I may not be happy with it, but I think that's what we're going to go with. 
I do have a, a much darker green, but uh, that's a clump. I don't care for that. I might have to use a let's use a piece of metal. I'm also thinking about making some micro spatulas, like pallet knives. I've got a fair amount of stainless steel and I think I could probably put together something kind of cool. Okay, so there we have it. We have some paints and I will use a, a very fine brush. I have a little thing of turpentine next to me a couple pieces of toilet paper to wipe my brush and now we bring back Mr. Bunny Rabbit okay so here's Mr. Bunny Rabbit and it's not exact this is not sort of super fancy painting uh, but like I said it's it's my effort to practice doing something that I hope to expand into other things so a big part of that is just getting used to the way that the paints and the, and the colors and the, the enamels work together so I'm just going to try and apply some color might use a, a needle to apply some of these, well, although that's looking pretty good. So we'll just, that's a big drop, and be careful with that. Yeah, we're getting there. I think if I'm going to be doing miniatures, what I'll be doing is I'll be cutting some brushes so that they just have, you know, somewhere between two and six filaments or hairs to act like capillaries. And I, I think the painting is almost more pointillism with this, uh, with the glass. Put a little bit more in that first blue flower. Yeah. Let's make sure that that looks pretty good. Okay. So I like those, and from a distance they look they look pretty good. I mean, close up with magnification, everything always looks a little odd. Um, but uh, then you back off of it a little bit, get some perspective and uh, see how it really looks. Okay, let's see what the yellow is like. I'm going to do some yellow on these fantasy flowers. Let's, let's start up here and see what we can do. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that yellow kind of looks nice. like I do oils, I layer oils. So when I do oil painting, I let the underpainting dry and then really I add paint in about five to ten different steps 
with drying in between. The, this, not so much because the the graphite will disappear after after another firing. So I don't want to have to fire this thing multiple times and the colors will fade with multiple firings. So ideally, you know, you, you, you I'll minimize that. Now I think I've heard some people they'll fire things, oh gosh, dozens of times to get the effect that they want. Um, I, you know, maybe with practice I'll be able to do that, but right now I haven't found that I can get away with that and make it look good. Okay. Okay, some turpentine on that. So there's some yellow and some blue. And clean my brush up. Now I'll add just a little bit of this light green to some of these leaves to give them some contrasting pretty color. Yeah, I like that. Okay, those will be nice. Just a little bit. Because that, that nice transparent green now shows through, the, the graphite shows through it somewhat, which is what I was hoping for. If I use too dark of a green, it would uh, it would get to be too intense, and it would cover some of that drawing, which wouldn't be a disaster, of course. But I'd rather not. So yeah, I can use a, a needle or a, a toothpick, maybe a hypodermic needle, something like that, that you know has a little bit of capillary action to it. And let's add just a little more now to this one. Now of course what I'm going to do too is I'm going to let this, uh, this oil sort of dry up. You can see that these blue flowers have begun to set a little bit. Um, I, I'm i not too comfortable. I don't think that this, these oils, the pine and the lavender, aren't super polymerizing oils like linseed is, or the alkids that I use, but it should polymerize a little bit <clears throat> as it dries. <coughs> so uh, my next step is going to be to um, I'm going to add a little a little transparent blue to the top, maybe just a couple of grains of green to the bottom, and then a, a, a very light dusting of transparent over the whole surface, and we will see how that plays out for us. Well, I'm going to use my 80 mesh sifter and put just a little bit of aqua blue across the top. There we go. Just a touch. And I need to be a little careful down on that graphite, but I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of uh, 
peppermint green down here along the edge. This is just dry sifted because you don't want in case that enamel hasn't absorbed all the graphite I don't want to risk it um, just yet. Okay, and then I'm going to use a 150 sifter, 150 mesh sifter to put some transparent over the surface of all of it. And we'll just cover everybody. with a dusting of transparent enamel. Alrighty. Now before I fire this, I'm going to uh, let those oils cure at least a little bit. Um, and this is still all quite experimental for me, but I think what I'm going to do is is set this on a hot plate um, for just a few, little bit just to, to see if I can't get that oil to set up a little bit faster. Well it's been about 10-15 oh, minutes. I have a feeling uh, you, could, you could leave these oils for days and, and that would probably be better but I'm gonna see if this works at all. Works a little bit. Makes me happy or makes me very sad. So let's see what what we have to see. So I'll approach slowly and see if, see if I can't uh, burn off the oil before it loses its integrity and spreads. And uh, I want to drop the glass crystals to the surface. So let's see what happens here. Actually, think it's a success. Yay! Well, let's let's make sure. We'll let it cool, and the moment of truth will be when I put it in water. And uh, make sure that nothing washes off. But at the moment, I think that's looking <laughs> really very nice. I I I, I like it. Okay. So this one might be worth having done. Um, yes, that's a, that's a nice application of the oil color. And it adds just enough pop that it looks really cool. Okay, we'll see if it, if it's set nicely.